In a product design process, it's a necessity being able to quickly generate multiple iterations of a design in order to evaluate product identity and aesthetics. In this fourth lesson in the Real Life Shape course, we'll look at a way to quickly make multiple configurations of a design by utilizing assembly functionality. During the shaping process, I'll also give some tips on general modeling techniques on what to avoid when shaping a design when you use the Real Life Shape tool. For this handheld vacuum design, I want to create a couple of drafts on alternative looks for the handle. We'll start by laying the foundation by creating a parent for this part, which is located in the assembly toolbar. Save the assembly file in the same folder as your part file. This file will now only act as a collector to our design variations. Now we use the pattern component tool to generate a couple of duplicates. I'll insert 3 in the count box as we're ending up with 3 components in total. So as of right now, we have 3 identical components in our assembly, but we want to be able to configure these individually. I'll first change my reference sets to model, since I don't want to see all of the tools I've used to detail my design. Now we unpack the parts in the assembly navigator and right click 2 of them to make them unique. We rename them individually, and we are left with two copies in which we can configure as we desire. I prefer to work isolated with each configuration, but you can work directly in the context of the assembly as I'm doing right now. So first, let's make one configuration with a slightly shorter handle. I'll also do a quick update on another subdivision model that I've used as a trimming feature. I now choose to isolate the second component by right-clicking it in our assembly navigator and choosing Make Displayed Part. I then enter the Real Life Shape tool from our history tree. My plan now is to make this end connected to the bottom of this design, making a looped handle. But before I do that, I want to add some minor details to the front end of this shape. And in order to achieve that, I have to split some faces. Now, when it comes to splitting and subdividing faces, it's important that you do this in a systematic manner. What I recommend you to avoid is just adding random splits and subdivisions on the different cage faces, as this can lead you to an undesired results, where you potentially can lose control of your shape. If we take a look at the general flow of faces on this design, you can see that we have an even flow of square patches. And this is something that we want to achieve. Always think that the lines on the geometry should describe the shape of your design, even if you are looking at it as a 2D projection. If you do happen to have some wrongdoings like this, you can use Merge Face to repair it. So when I now start to add some details to this body, 
I'll make sure that I'll follow the cage faces all around the loop. If you have a heavily detailed subdivision model, this can become a tedious process. And that's where we can put on a selection filter to more easily divide our faces correctly. If you go to this drop down menu, you can see that we have an option to choose face loop. So if I now select a face, it will automatically select all the faces in that loop. And it also automatically selects the faces where your mouse points towards. If we, for instance, wanted to add the details in the longitudinal direction, I'd just select the face closer to one of the longitudinal cage faces. So now I'll just add some quick details and finish up the handle using some of the techniques described in the earlier tutorials.